Welcome to Bumblebee. Here's why ancient Egypt was impossible to survive. Marriage. Women in ancient Egypt were often treated as equal to men, as they were allowed to own property, conduct business dealings, and even testify in court. Equal rights, what do you know? Some women were able to rule Egypt, like Cleopatra, Hatshepsut, and many others. Women had the ability to obtain high-ranking jobs like administrators, supervisors, and priestesses. But their main responsibility was to be the caretaker of the home and the children above all else. The concept of family was very important during life in ancient Egypt. Most marriages in Egypt were arranged by the parents, and girls were usually married around the age of 12, and boys around the age of 15. Girls would stay home and learn from their mother, while the boys would train and follow in the profession of their fathers and their uncles. Numerous wives. Most marriages at the time, despite sounding young and borderline creepy and disgusting, most marriages were polygamous, believe it or not, with the husband having several wives. Yeah, you heard me. One of the wives was considered a chief wife who was considered higher than the other wives. One wife to rule them all. Love that. Divorce also existed in ancient Egypt. I mean, of course, when you have a handful of wives, that's probably inevitable. The thing is, divorce back then was actually rare because the Egyptians were committed by family unity. It's just you, it's me, and our six other wives. One big, very happy family. Here we go. Shelters and homes. Home and shelter and life in ancient Egypt. Ancient Egyptians built their own houses. They also built pyramids somehow, but we'll figure that out later, I guess. Egyptians built houses, temples, and tombs. They made these structures out of mud brick and they laid them out to dry. This material was fast and cheap. Almost all the mud bricks have now crumbled and disappeared into history. Houses were filled with decorations, amulets, and ancient religious artifacts. The houses were cool on the inside and had a flat roof so that in the summertime people could sleep on top of the roof. How jazzy is that? Most townhouses were divided into two floors. The first floor is reserved for reception and the top floor is private housing for the residents. Houses were built around courtyards and all the cooking was done on the inside of the courtyard. All the noblemen houses were larger as they had three areas while the rest of the farmers lived in modest houses. Yeah, mansion back then was three rooms. Let's go. The Nile River. The Nile River was essential for transportation of goods, materials, and of course, people. It allowed communication between Upper and Lower Egypt. Now the goods that were transported were vital to the civilization. Egyptians cultivated essential crops such as wheat, barley, papyrus. Now papyrus was extremely popular. That was crafted into paper, rope, and baskets. And of course the Nile held significant religious importance as well. It was seen as a divine gift from deities like Sobek, whom the Egyptians believed to be the creator of said Nile. Today you can take a Nile River cruise. You just have a margarita. You can see the sights and not be stomped by a hippo while you do it. How lovely is that here in the future? Entertainment. Ancient Egyptians would pass the time in pretty crazy ways. They would participate in a variety of activities from hunting crocodiles and hippopotamuses to engaging in board games, believe it or not. They had board games like Senate and Hounds and Jackals. I love Hounds and Jackals. It's a personal favorite. That and Candyland, ooh, so good. Even the simplest things would bring joy, like animal-shaped carvings for children. They played numerous sports as well, including early forms of swimming, hockey, handball, wrestling, rowing, archery, gymnastics, and water sports was a huge one. Water jousting specifically, which involved mock sea battles in small boats on the Nile River. What a show. Just watch out for the crocs. The elite were known to host lavish parties, showing off the best foods and beverages. Most festivals in life in ancient Egypt had a religious nature, as all the Egyptians celebrated the gods' birthdays. The religious festivals were held in conjunction with the lunar calendar, and temples like the Festival of the Valley in the honor of the god Amun, or the Feast of Hathor in Dendera. There were also more casual celebrations that we still carry on today. Individual birthdays, the anniversaries of great deeds of the king, funerals, and housewarming events, yada yada. We'll find any excuse to party, really. Gender reveal parties? We'll burn down a forest for that one. Let's go. Clothing and fashion. In ancient Egypt, clothing and fashion were influenced by climate and social status. The common attire was simple and practical, of course. It was linen, being the most predominant fabric due to its coolness and breathability in the hot Egyptian sun. And men typically wore knee-length kilts, while women don't on ankle-length dresses called sheets. Jewelry and accessories played a significant role, of course, with both genders adorning themselves with bracelets, necklaces, and earrings, showcasing all the wealth and status that you could. Wigs and elaborate hairstyles were also in style at this point, heightened by perfumes and oils. Pharaohs and the elite displayed their wealth through more intricate garments and heavier use of gold and precious stones. But here's where it gets interesting. Death
death and the afterlife. Ancient Egyptians believed in the afterlife, a continuation of existence after death where the deceased would lead a similar life to the one they had on Earth. For me personally, sounds terrible. That's a lot of, a lot of bills to pay forever. But to ensure a comfortable and prosperous afterlife, they were buried with all of their possessions, ranging from daily essentials and personal treasures to food and wealth. This practice stemmed from the belief that these goods would be later used by the deceased in the afterlife. Extra care was given to items that held religious and symbolic meanings, such as amulets and statues of gods, to provide protection and aid in navigating the scary afterlife. Trusty servant. In ancient Egypt, it was common for servants to accompany their masters everywhere they go, including into the afterlife. Yeah, pretty crazy. This practice reflected on the belief that individuals needed assistance and companionship, even in the realm of the dead. So servants were considered essential for ensuring the comfort and well-being of the deceased in the afterlife. They would be depicted in tomb paintings and inscriptions, and their statues or figurines would be placed into tombs to serve the deceased. Just a little statue of your servant. Here we go, me and you, pal. These servants were believed to continue their duties in the afterlife, providing sustenance, performing daily tasks, and maintaining the dead's social status. That sounds exhausting. That's commitment right there, folks. Where you go, I go, including death. Also, that's a terrible job. After you die, you still have to work for somebody forever? No dice, I would bail. I'd be like, mm, I'm not gonna do it. The first Pharaoh peace treaty. The first recorded peace treaty ever in history is the Treaty of Kadesh, concluded around 1258 BCE. Now it was between the Egyptian empire under the Pharaoh Ramses II and the Hittite empire led by King Hattusuli III. This treaty ended years of conflict over territories in Syria and established a boundary between two empires. It was motivated by mutual recognition of the need for peace and the desire to focus on internal stability rather than you know external threats. The treaty was inscribed on a silver tablet with copies in both the Egyptian and the Akkadian languages. This was a massive diplomatic milestone. Imagine being the first leader to be like, can we stop? Is that an option? That would be super helpful. We could just Great, cool, hippo stomp. We'll finish off this list with perhaps the worst way to die. Why not? Do you have any idea how fast hippos are? A hippopotamus can run as fast as 31 miles an hour. That's fast, and it's also massive and terrifying with big teeth. The Pharaoh Menes was Egypt's first pharaoh. Now, of course, we don't know much about this long lost pharaoh from 3100 BC, but what we do know is that King Menes ruled over Egypt during a peaceful time. And we also know that he was stomped to death by his own pet hippo. Holy shit, what a way to go out. This king spent over 60 years on the throne and a hippo got him. What? I don't think there's a harder way to go out as a man, really. Getting killed by a hippo? That's badass. It's a mystery still, thousands of years later, as to how a hippo stomped the first king of Egypt, but the only statement recalling the event was written down as he was carried off by a hippopotamus and perished. Yeah, he for sure perished before he was carried off, but sure. I think the stopping part got him. I'm pretty confident. Just throwing that out. I've been your host, Taylor McWaters. Thanks for joining us on Bumblebee, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. What's up? Your curly host is back. Look at this, looking good today. Uh, uh, we can cut, uh, I'll just start from here actually. Editors, Pol polygamous, Pol Pol polygamous, polygamous, polygamous. And the Hittite empire, oh, Hittite. I wrote Hittite because I knew it. I was like, Hittite? No, Hittite.